Google Webmaster Tools Structured Data Intro Hello and welcome. In this video session I'm going to briefly introduce to you the feature called Structured Data which is available in Google Webmaster Tools account. It is under Search Appearance and if we click on it on my website this is what I see. Now, if you've never used it yours surely will not have all um, details as such okay so what is structured data okay and let's try to understand what it is because if you read about it before you watch this video session then you will know that it is quite complex to really wrap your head around the whole concept of marking up your website Okay, because you know everyone's in different niches. You may have an e-commerce site, you may have a blog, or you may have a web page, and so on. Okay, so Google makes this available for us webmasters. Okay, so if that's the case, well, what is what is it, and how can we take full advantage of it? And in this video session, I'm going to try to explain all that to you from my understanding and experience. Okay, so. Let's get into it and let's have a look at a couple of things here. Google Webmaster Tools help section has great information, but it is not for the beginner. Meaning, if you are just looking into structured data and rich snippets and all this stuff, the information that Google provides is actually very confusing and you will only get overwhelmed. Okay? So, for instance, we have microdata here and we've got microformats, we've got RDFA, you know, what, what are all these things? And Google suggests to us to use microdata here, right? As we can see, it's recommended. But then, if you were to, let's say you've got um, products, you've got an e-commerce site, for example, then Google turns around and says, well, oh, we've got something new here and it's called um, schema.org let you mark up much wider range of types and and all this stuff right so that if you don't understand the whole concept of what's going on then you're only gonna get confused about the information Google provides for you okay so let's leave all the information that you may have read from Google Webmaster Tools and let's try to understand what rich snippets and structured data is all about in this video session okay so let's have a look at what this word means schema okay you may use it schema or schema depending on on the country that you're living in on this planet right but the word itself you know we, we kind of need to understand the word itself as well reason being you know surely you know when you're running um, a website it's got not much to do with psychology apart from you know perhaps creating web copywriting and so on right but you know the word itself comes from you know in psychology but for us to understand the whole whole structured data business I want to draw your attention to these two words here organized pattern okay now let's take those two words from this word here organized pattern let's leave everything else now when we take organized pattern okay let's take that out and then let's try to um, incorporate it into our understanding okay organized pattern as far as computers are concerned okay so for you to you know really truly understand the rich snippets and structured data and all this stuff Okay, just imagine it as your way of organizing your web pages. It doesn't matter what you have on your web pages, whether it's a blog, whether you've got products, whether you've got a web page that is showcasing an event of sort. Okay? Because as we can see, Google turns around and says, Oh, Google understands all these different types of um, rich snippets, right? But that's not all that you can do with rich snippets. Okay, this is only what Google understands. 
but as far as the structured data is concerned <laughs> there is much more to it than what um, Google is saying here surely this tutorial is about Google Webmaster Tools but for us to even you know take advantage of all these things we kind of still have to understand what the SEMA is all about okay I'd like to call it SEMA you may call it schema it makes no difference as far as you and I are concerned it's the same thing so let's understand what the difference between these things are you know microdata microformats RDFA what are these let's have a look microdata is basically from W3 okay consortium for web standards right but you know microdata is just uh, a way of structuring your web page elements by giving them more um, details to the element itself okay by 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 giving them properties by giving them scopes and all this stuff right so microdata with RDFA also microformats now when you think of these three things just imagine okay just imagine them as three different languages that a computer program will understand in our case it's Google so therefore it's only intelligent I believe for us to reason like that or else we may think okay you know what Google showing three different ones here okay and they all show you something a little bit different to one another okay so which one do you use right so therefore for you to understand the difference between the three things that Google suggests just understand them as three different ways of structuring your data okay let's imagine it as three different languages okay so now now that we kind of getting our minds around the difference between these things now let's have a look at the the only one i believe will serve you as far as google is concerned and that is the schema.org now reason being is because we've got the major players all contributing to this particular one whereas these they are not as supported by the major players so therefore you can by reason straight away know that the future of structured data will most likely be focused on schema.org vocabulary in our case we are still talking about a language that computer programs can understand when we use it okay additional um, you know description of our web page elements right so therefore as we can see we've got the major players that means you know full well even though the standards are out there which actually tell you to use something a little bit um, in a different manner although the w3 standards say that when you when you got the big players then everyone's gonna you know all, most webmasters will be focusing on this because there is a greater benefit in following this vocabulary okay so now that we've got that out of the way let's get right into it okay let's have a look at something else here now let's imagine this is our web page okay and let's say that we've got some product we've got some text and it doesn't matter what we have on our web page by default as far as structured data is concerned like schema.org vocabulary is concerned if you define nothing by default all the URLs are web page by default okay so knowing that we may then scope our web page as such now when you think of a scope okay just imagine it as a container that scope you know entails everything that you describe on a particular element in this case it's the whole web page so the scope we can then say is the web page 
and within it we can have many different properties okay so then we can say okay you know what my navigation menu okay I want to wrap that up in 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 a scope as well I want to scope to the navigation element entire entirely okay in its entirety okay so and I say to that look you know what I'm gonna contain that in site navigation element now where these come from it comes from schema.org which we are going to take a look at in the minute okay so let's say that I've got a product and I want to scope that as a product okay so the scope of that is the product and within whatever is in that web element whether it's a div whether it's a um, section element and whatnot it makes no difference as long as you're aware of how we are communicating in a sense how we are describing that element itself so then let's say surely naturally product may have a, 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 a an offer then I scope the offer meaning offer should have perhaps price if I have a product surely I'm gonna have a price for it right if I don't have it, then I'm not going to scope it because then there is no price, for instance. Okay, but if I have a price, then the vocabulary, okay, the semantics and the structured um, data tells us to scope it as such. Okay, so the reason I show you this is because I want you to understand, you know, when we're going to use the the elements that's available for us to use, we need to scope them. And that scoping part is very critical for us to understand to use all its properties okay so that is very important also all these things as far as structured data is concerned let's call it a vocabulary meaning it's a way of 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 um, communicating right so and where do all these come from in our example and as suggested by Google, it comes from schema.org. So, now let's take a look at what that means in the next video session.